As fitness professionals, it's important for us to open up a framework and a pathway of good quality leads coming into our business on a weekly and ideally a daily basis. And there's a number of ways that we can do that. And over the course of the masterclasses that I'll be sharing over the coming weeks and months, we'll be looking at an array of them. Each of them will fall into what I call my fitness market blueprints. One of the key ones that I've used to great success myself over the years in my business and in sharing with clients is a client reactivation campaign. And we'll go through what one of those is, why they're important in my opinion, and I'll give you a framework. And there's towards the end, if you stick with me, I've got a little gift which I can point you in the direction of that you can download for free to help you get started if you want to be running a client reactivation campaign. I think you should essentially. So let's get going. Who am I? It's Andrew Wallace here, founder of Andrew Wallace Consultancy and Fitness Marketing Blueprints. I've ran my own fitness business since 2004, both on the Isle of Man, where I'm from, and overseas in Australia. And now I work with a growing list of clients, helping them build out their marketing funnels and helping them with their content creation and the likes. So what are we looking at today? Well, as I say, it, the objectives here are to discuss what a reactivation campaign is, why I feel they're important, and we're going to look at recognizing the importance of such a campaign when it comes to marketing your fitness business. And of course, it's good to know the what and the why, but ultimately we need to know the how. So I'll outline how to develop and execute an effective campaign strategy. So what is a reactivation campaign? Essentially, it's a marketing campaign that we utilize as fitness professionals uh, to bring back past clients who we may have lost touch with for whatever means. There's an array of reasons why clients leave or stop using our services. It could be that they go away on holiday, perhaps they've moved away from the area that uh, you run your services from, if you're a local business, of course, or it could be that, you know, maybe the just got busy at work or it's come to that time of year where the kids are off and they take up the attention of parents there's an array of reasons why they lose track and we lose touch with them so the goal of a reactivation campaign is to rekindle that past client's interest re-engage with them and encourage them to come back into your program. It's so much easier to re-engage with somebody who's been a past client as opposed to somebody who's never tried your services before, provided, of course, that you've given them a great service, which I have no doubt that that's the case. So that's why I'm a big fan of running these types of campaigns. Plus, if these are clients that you've enjoyed working with, it's always a, a big plus to get them back in to working with you again. So why do reactivation campaigns matter? Well, my view, there's two key reasons why they matter. First of all, reactivation campaigns are a game changer for your fitness business. They're relatively cheap to implement. Once you've got the basics in place, you can run them again and again uh, each and every year. And of course, they boost revenue. Perhaps more importantly, they reconnect you with valued clients. Why should reactivation campaigns be an integral part of any fitness professional marketing toolkit? Again, my opinion on this is it's cost efficient compared to trying to find new clients because these people, you've had a prior relationship with these clients. They know how you work. They know that the services you offer, as I say, the reasons why they're not currently working with you are for any number of reasons, but generally it's they've reached the end of the program they were on, life got in the way, perhaps they had an injury or an illness outside of working with you that prevented them continuing with you. More often than not, in my experience is that primarily because I work with a lot of parents, that it tied in with when the kids were off school and they would take their holidays or their you know, mothers were spending their time and their focus on their kids as opposed to themselves so that they were unable to 
manage or find time for their workouts so the workout suffered but they were perfect for a client reactivation when the kids went back to school hence why we're doing this and why i'm recording this now if you're listening to this as i publish this we're just coming off the back of uh, the easter holidays here in the uk kids are going back to school now would be one time in the year which might make sense to run a reactivation campaign with kindle's engagement and trust as well the longer somebody disappears from being having you as their coach top of mind awareness dissipates it disappears so if we're giving them a nudge where we back top of mind and it's at a time when they've got more availability, then there's a good chance that, that they're going to re-engage and jump back on board with you. Reactivation campaigns boost client lifetime value because, again, an increase of revenues that you're getting in to somebody that's already invested time and money with you. So it goes to say that over the, their lifetime of working with you, there's additional revenues in place with that. Ignoring active or past clients, in my view, can be a, a missed opportunity because, as I said previously, these people know, like, and trust you. They've stopped working with you for, as I said, a number of reasons. But we shouldn't ignore the fact that we've got that relationship, that past relationship with them, and just that little nudge of an offer like a reactivation campaign can be just what's needed to get them back on board. Reactivation campaigns help restore a positive brand image and they provide valuable insights for fitness business improvement. They're an easy add-on to any savvy fitness business owner's marketing calendar. So the big question, how do you run a reactivation campaign? I believe to run a successful client reactivation campaign for any fitness business professional, there's eight key elements that we need to address. And I've got them lined up here as we'll go through on the screen. Firstly, as with anything, we need to set clear goals. So to define specific campaign objectives, such as the number of reactivated clients you wish to attract, also the revenue targets that you want to attain, or that you might be looking at engagement metrics. Second element is segmenting your audience. I always recommend when working with clients that we identify and we segment past clients that we've worked with based on their interests, their activity history and engagement level. Uh, as an add-on to that as well, I wouldn't be looking at trying to re-engage or reactivate a client that's only just recently finished with me in the past four, six, maybe eight, maybe 12 weeks. But beyond that, absolutely, I would be going through my list, making sure that I build a list of those inactive clients, as well as prospects, to be honest, but primarily inactive clients that we can reach out to. Third element is crafting a compelling message. This message should be personalized and, of course, engaging, and it should be engaging content that speaks directly to the person. Whenever they hear, see our videos, hear us on a podcast or read some text content that we create, our content should be speaking directly to that individual. It should resonate with them and it should leave them ultimately nodding their head as they read each element that you've put together in your content, uh, showcasing that you understand the challenges and obstacles they face with their health and wellness. This is where the engagement comes in. Element number four is choosing the right channels. And what I mean by that is that we're selecting the communication channels that best reach your ideal target audience. More often than not, I always recommend that that should be to our email list. Hopefully you are building an email list that I feel as a fitness business professional is our number one marketing strategy. Build your list. Too often I see so many fitness professionals, they don't have a website and that makes me want to pull my hair out. We need to have our own digital storefront that we control. But unfortunately, too many of us to this day depend on Facebook or Instagram as our platform of choice. And and that's great to, to be able to use those platforms to amplify our message, but not to build our business upon because unfortunately, I've seen this happen too often. Those platforms go down or maybe they take a dislike to a post or an advert that you put up on there and they suspend your account. Suddenly, you've got no way of connecting with your audience. On the switch side, if we have, which we should have, 
our own website, then you control that. You manage that accordingly. And then you utilize the, your social media platforms that you depend upon as driving eyeballs from the content you create on those platforms over to your digital home, i.e. your website. But the key thing with choosing the right channels is firstly, again, in my opinion, choose a channel or a couple of channels that you feel comfortable on, but equally where you know your target audience is going to be. It doesn't make any sense to go onto Twitter if your audience aren't on that channel or LinkedIn if they're not on that channel. But if they are, then it makes complete sense to be able to utilize that. So key thing, make sure you choose that right channel. The fifth element is schedule and automate. As fitness professionals, we are busy. You know, we're busy uh, working with our client base. We're busy in our business. What that means is, and the challenges I see with working with fitness professionals is that we don't devote enough time to work on our business. But we, there are ways around that. And by scheduling and automating our tasks, enables us to get so much more done and become so much more efficient. So look to plan out the campaign timeline. Look to include send out dates and follow-ups. That's what I do when working with my clients, when we're putting together a launch of a new service or the launch of a campaign such as a reactivation campaign. We have in a Google Doc the outline, the dates that we're going to send out each item. And ahead of time, we get all of the relevant assets put together, the email, the YouTube videos, the social media posts and the like. And then we get them tested and scheduled to make sure they're all ready to rock and roll. And equally, the follow-up emails are already done, plugged into the software that the client uh, uses, be it MailChimp, be it ConvertKit, be it Aweber, ActiveCampaign and the like. Element number six is monitor and adjust. It's tracking and measuring. It's knowing your numbers. It's always important to keep a close eye on the performance of any marketing campaign that we look to take on the road and, and press go. If we don't monitor or we don't track, how do we know if it's successful or not? So the key things with any marketing campaign is we want to be looking at tracking the open rates of your emails, the click-through rate. What I mean by that is that in your email where you're outlining or notifying folks about this campaign that you launched, there'll be a link for them to click. Equally on your social media, there'll be a link that you'll be directing people to. We also look at conversions, you know, how many people clicked that um, link and ultimately followed up and became a paying client again. All of these gives us indication of where we can make incremental improvements to improve the overall success of a marketing campaign. And then we can make adjustments as needed. So when we run it again, hopefully that means it will be an even greater success. Element number seven is engage and provide value. That's where we're looking to encourage two-way communication with reactivated clients. You know, once they've made a big decision to put their trust in you again, so we want to make sure that we remind them of the stellar services that we have to offer. You know, we want to be able to wow them with the service that stands us apart from any perceived competition. How do we do that? Well, we can stand apart by um, not only giving them our full attention in the sessions that we that we run for them, but equally looking to offer valuable content. Maybe there's bundled offers that you put into, into the mix. Maybe there's a private community that you put together that they can connect with similar clients going through a similar journey as themselves so that they can support each other and hold each other accountable. But equally, look at giving excellent customer service. If they ask a question, it doesn't mean you have to answer it right away, but certainly within realistic time frame, you know, giving them that full value, that full trust and that full support. And the eighth element is feedback and refinement. Once we've got, and this comes not only within reactivation campaigns, but equally with existing clients that are work, we're working with currently, look to collect feedback from your clients so that you can continuously improve not only your reactivation strategy, but the services you provide your clients going forwards. I like on that instance, as an example, is I like to give out a survey periodically to my existing client base, my active clients, just to get things back from 
from them. And I know, uh, thinking back, particularly in my group training sessions, I would get some valuable suggestions on things where I can improve. Or they might feel comfortable to mention bits where we may be dropping the ball so that we can address those issues, improve them so that we give that um, that value or service that we strive to provide. A question I get asked by clients, how often should you run a reactivation campaign? It's a great question. And the answer I feel, although I've put here three to four times, I've seen people doing more often, running them consistently through the year. And let's say in January, they might be um, sending out a reactivation campaign to a client that finished working with them by September of the previous year. And then the February, it would be by October the previous year and so on and so forth. What's worked best for me is running them once a quarter. But if I was doing it now, I would suggest maybe two to three times a year because I like to mix in alternative campaigns as well. But anything between two, three to four times a year, I think maintains engagement, helps prevent drop-offs, and maximizes your revenue. And the reason for this is I think that it strikes a balance without overwhelming folks. And it gets you top of mind with them and gets you reconnected with those clients that you enjoy working with. But like anything, what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for another person. So when it comes to marketing, it's always trial and then track and measure to see what's working. Give it a tweak and, and work again. But in my opinion, based upon 20 years of running these types of things is two, three, up to four times a year has worked best for me. So um, if you're looking for some guidance and you like the sound of running your first client reactivation campaign, I've got some real world examples of an effective reactivation campaign that I've, wor I've worked with and shared with clients. It's the back to school playbook. So if you would like a copy of this, you found that this has piqued your interest and you've never tried a client reactivation campaign before, but you want to give it a go, then comment below, put playbook in the comments below, and I will get a free copy of the in-depth playbook, which contains sample emails, sample content for your landing page and so on, so that you can look to plug that in to play for yourself. If you have any questions whatsoever, I'm always on hand to answer them. You can leave your questions below the video and I'll get back to them within the channel here. Or you can get me via my socials at Andrew Wallace HQ. You can see the spelling of Wallace on the screen here, W-A-L-L-I-S. Or you can get me via email, Andrew at AndrewWallace.me, M-E. I just want to finish off with the key takeaways from this quick masterclass today. We started out, what is a reactivation campaign? So as hopefully you know by now, a reactivation campaign essentially targets former clients who have disengaged for whatever reason from your fitness services. They are inactive clients. They are not currently working with you. They've experienced your services sometime in the past. And as I said, it's so much easier to re-engage and reactivate a client than it is to try and sell your services to somebody who has never experienced what you have to offer. Why reactivation campaigns matter? Reactivation campaigns can significantly boost your revenue, which is a great thing. We all want to increase our revenues and and perhaps more importantly, helps to reconnect you with valuable clients that you've enjoyed working with in the past. I guess a key point there is if you've got inactive clients that you didn't particularly like working with, well, perhaps they're not a good fit for trying to re-engage and reactivate them. Um, don't be driven just purely by revenue. You know, we want to enjoy the role that we have and we want to work with people we enjoy working with. So get that balance right. And when you do, you'll have a fantastic time. How often should you run a reactivation campaign? Through my personal experience, I believe running a reactivation campaign each quarter or certainly three to four times annually maintains engagement, prevents client drop-offs and maximizes revenue. The goal of reactivation campaigns is 
to rekindle the inactive client's interest, re-engage with them and encourage them to come back into working with you on their health and wellness journey. Why is a reactivation campaign integral to fitness marketing? A number of reasons. Firstly, cost effective compared to new client acquisition. As I've mentioned before, it's so much easier to re-engage and reactivate a past client than it is to try to sell to somebody who hasn't tried your services before. It rekindles trust and engagement with those clients. It boots, boosts their overall lifetime client value. It seizes opportunities with active or past clients, helps enhance and restore your brand image and offers valuable business insights. What are retention emails? These emails are class reminders, celebrating achievements, inviting those clients to challenges that you run, gathering feedback, as well as sharing fitness trends and any value-based fitness information you want to pass on to your clients and to your audience. So how do you run a reactivation campaign? There's eight steps to follow and they are in order. One, set clear goals. Two, segment your audience. Three, craft a compelling message. Four, choose the right channels. Five, schedule and automate six monitor and adjust seven engage with your audience and provide stellar value to them and finally eight gather feedback and make refinements where necessary thank you for your time today uh your your time uh, i value it very much and um, hopefully you found this session of interest and of value if you've not tried client reactivation campaigns before please do they're an incredible marketing strategy to employ quite quick and easy particularly when you target the right audience that are currently inactive they were previously clients and if you're still stuck and you're wanting some guidance and support as i mentioned comment below playbook and i will get you the the pdf over to you with the steps including the sample email templates etc that you can adapt accordingly and look to utilize to make your next marketing campaign being a reactivation campaign and making sure it's successful. Well, that's it for this masterclass. Thank you for your time today and I'll catch up with you again very soon. Bye for now.